Hey gang, we're in here. Welcome on back to the Cade and another episode of WTF Wednesday. The series where we take a look at games that just were never destined to be great, or in this case, even mildly good. And for this one, we're going to go back to 1992 slash 1993, and we're going to play a game that was featured in both the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and the Sega Genesis. It's Chester Cheetah, Too Cool to Fool. Now, if the name Chester Cheetah does not ring a bell to you, it's because probably you didn't grow up in the 80s slash early 90s like I did at a time where every company was trying to come up with a catchy mascot of some renown to convince people to buy the products they were trying to hawk upon the teeming masses. And Chester Cheetah was the official mascot of Frito-Lay's Cheetos brand snacks. Yes, those overly cheesy snacks that you can buy in pretty much any vending machine or any corner store in the U.S. or pretty much anywhere else in the world at this point. They somehow convinced a company called Kaneko to make them a 2D platforming game. And not just one of them, but this game apparently did well enough that it caused them to make a second game called Wild Wild Quest the following year. Now, Kaneko was formed in 1980 in Tokyo and it went out of business in 2007. Gee, I can't imagine why. But what we're going to do over the next... 30 minutes or so, 25 if I'm feeling generous, is we're going to see if we can get through this game. Now, in doing my research for it, and I will concede, this was actually not the game I had in mind that I was going to profile this week, but in looking at what my other options were when my version of J um, John Romero's Daikatana didn't work on my Nintendo 64 emulator, I had to come up with a sufficient backup plan, and I think by the time I'm done playing this, it will definitely have fit the bill of a prime candidate for WTF Wednesday. Now, this game is not very hard to control. Chester basically can move in two different directions, and you take enemies out by jumping. So, very much like Adventure Island, which we profiled on our one-day playthrough on Monday. This game is very, very similar to the majority of platformers that have been around since the mid-80s, which, ironically enough, is also about the same time that the Free Day Company came up with Chester Cheetah. Now, how this game works is that up in the upper right-hand corner, you see that life bar with the big old orange paws. If that hits z zero, and then we can hit again, then Chester dies, and it's automatic game over. But we can pick up these big... Like, big paws, and that will expand his life. And then we find this guitar, and the guitar... Besides making him dance a really weird jig, apparently will help him take out any, any enemies that are in the immediate vicinity. Then we can come down into these pipes, so it's got a Mario component to it where you find yourself going down sewers and down pipes. and picking up items you wouldn't otherwise normally find. So now he's got the guitar again, but still, now I'm sitting here in a hole in the ground, dancing a jig, and getting nothing of benefit out of it. So it looks like I can't go down that way. Now, the Frito Lake Company came up with this character, Chester, Ch Chester Cheetah, in 1986. And they used him pretty much, as far as I remember, until the. Pretty much the start of the millennium, if memory serves. And I'm 
trying to get those sunglasses up there. Oop, I hit the water. So now if I get hit again, that's it, game over. So I'll go down this chute and see if there's anything of help down here and there's a paw that I can get. Looks like another one over there. And one right there. So this game does not give you a whole major degree of difficulty in terms of being able to reaccumulate life. The problem comes when you're trying to control your character. And get him to do what you want him to do. So now we got hello. What are you? Okay, I'm thinking I don't want to get hit by those big feet. So, if I didn't know any better, I'd just say I've got to crawl under the... Ooh! Or get... At least not get hit by them. Oh, and I got hit, and I died. Okay. And I've only got so many continues left, it looks like. I've got two of them to get through the entire game with. And I don't know how many levels there are in this game because the research I have didn't tell me. So this is a game that could only take you know, you beat it potentially in an hour, or... Alright, so the same guy that's driving the steamroller, and it looks like a big dog. Also looks like the one that's driving the other contraption that I gotta find my way to work around. So get the guitar. I just realized that Chester is left-handed. Not that I think that, that means anything, because he ain't no Hendrix. I don't know what the value of the shoes are. So now that we have the glasses on, we can see things we normally wouldn't. So let's see, we were able to go down this pipe. Whoop. I don't want to do that. I want to go back down. Okay, go this way, see if I can get anything. Pick up more of these paw coins or whatever they are. Get some more life. Now, Kaneko, along with this game, they came out with other games that none of them were really of great note to me. The only one that I know of was uh, Bonk's Adventure, was an old TurboGrafx 16 game. They came out with a PC version of it. 
but other than that... They hadn't really done anything else. If anything, it looks like they made games that were of... I think the easiest way for me to put it is of slightly ill repute, because it looks like they were uh, designed for a very specific clientele of a more adult persuasion, but I'm not going to click on them on those links to find out. So the sunglasses don't last too long. And now what I need to do is I need to get out of this tunnel. And you would think if you can just keep him right underneath it, you should be able to get up and out of it, but they don't make it all that easy. So this is the one I think we want to go down where we... can come back out where that big old machine is. And I'm thinking that's something we want to get. Whoop! Whatever that glowing thing was down there. Now the object of this game is that apparently we've got to put together all the pieces of Chester's scooter. What that gets us, I have no idea. All right. Now we got to this side. Uh, yep, that's what I thought. We tend to avoid the feet and get away from it. And let's say we have to go down this way, or we're advised to go down this way. Otherwise, it wouldn't put a big honking arrow there going, Go this way! No, you imbecile, go down. So I guess if I jump on the turtles when they are curled up in their shells, that's not good. Yep, that's what we needed. That I think those were wheels we got. As long as the turtles aren't housed up inside their shells, so they're rolling around and we jump on them, then we can take them out. the exit so it took us 15 minutes almost to get past the first level in this game and it looks like we got ourselves another continue and we've got the wheels for the scooter so now we need to go this way Whoop. looks like there was a skateboard or something up there
And naturally, because there's no map, there's no real sense of direction in this game, you are completely left to your own devices to figure out what... what do you have to do in order to beat it. Now, they did do a, obviously, like most games, it came with an instruction manual, but apparently... They wrote it in a way similar to a Dr. Seuss book where everything is written in what's called English. And English is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a slang term for an inaccurate, poorly translated, nonsensical, or ungrammatical use of the English language. So if that's what you have available to you in a way to try and discern how this game operates and you can't for lack of a better term make heads or tails of it then I don't know how this game is supposed to be made in enjoyable by any stretch of the imagination Down here, get the shoes, jump on this hedgehog. Okay, I don't know what the purple guys do or if that helped me in any way, but got that one taken care of. Now, it says I'm supposed to be able to go up there and grab that vine, but heck if I know how to get there. And I got the guitar, clearly. I'm at full light, or at least I was, and I took that wolf out. Because, yeah, the highest I can jump isn't going to get me to that rope. And even though I've got these sneakers, I don't know if that's going to do me any good. This vine should be able to sling me in one direction or another, but in fact, all it's doing is making me borderline motion sick. And I don't get motion sick. Aha! So I'm trying to move it side to side to build up momentum. And I think when I get to that peak, going to the right side, that's when I let go and I should be able to fly over there. But so far, I've hit the face of that cliff twice. I'm 
mean, I got this monkey following me around, but heck of a lot of good he's doing me. Now, when this game came out, despite it not having much going for it, it actually got fairly favorable reviews. Consoles Plus gave it 77%, Electronics Gaming Monthly gave it 31 out of 40, and Electronic Games gave it 82%. However, Time Extension, which is a publication that I'm not familiar with, listed it as one of the worst Super Nintendo games of all time. And I'm inclined to believe them on it. Because these controls make really no sense. And even though this character was designed to be the mascot for... Again, as I said, the Cheeto snack food. There is no mention of Cheetos anywhere in the game, apparently. So as far as product placement went, they couldn't even use the item by which he was created to advertise. Well, I'll try this one more time, and if not, then I think... I may pull the ripcord on this one and call it good. Because we seem to reach an impasse where the controls are not wanting me to be able to get any further. Yeah. So, that in a nutshell is Chester Cheetah Too Cool to Fool from 1992-1993. And again, like I said, this is typical and right up the street of something that would qualify for a WTF Wednesday. Is it a good game? No, it's a horrible game. The mechanics are awful. There's no rhyme or reason to the game design, the level design. The mechanics don't make a whole lot of sense. The items you pick up I have no idea how they work. And there's no real incentive to go further in the game because if your whole point of the game is just to make a scooter for this character, okay, that's fine. But ultimately, if you beat the game, what do you... Wh where's the value in that? And... Again, this falls into something that sticks into my craw a lot, and it's something that is not unfamiliar now I think if anything it's evolved into what we get with live service games and microtransactions and it was like something I saw earlier today about how EA is wanting to incorporate actual advertisements in their new game content as they're releasing it is that everybody's trying to find a way to make extra bucks on IP that they've created but who in their right mind would have gone out in 1992 93 and dropped, what, 30, 40 bucks at the time, which was the going rate for most Super NES and NES, or uh, Genesis games, on a game like this when there was hundreds of other options to choose from with far better content. You could have gotten Donkey Kong Country. You could have gotten Sonic the Hedgehog. You could have gotten Mario World. You could have gotten Super Mario All-Stars. You could have gotten any other sort of game that would have met your criteria for a solid platformer if that was what you were in the mood for instead of a POS like this. I mean, the only thing you could say that might have going for it is that the graphics aren't terrible, but they're also graphics that look like they were made, and I'm not saying this to be pejorative to them, but they're graphics that look like they were made by a first-year art student. They weren't made by people who could actually make graphics that would work. I mean, these are almost like really artifacted translations of 8-bit graphics for the time on a 16-bit console. 
So is it a game you could make today? I suppose if you really wanted to, if you had a company who was going to put in the money to bankroll it. But who would buy it? And what company would sacrifice their integrity to make it for a quick shill, knowing that they weren't going to make their money back and they weren't likely going to sell many units? I have no idea if this game sold much of, if anything at all, because, again, like I've said, back in the 90s, it wasn't as critical to companies to really accurately gauge how many units they sold for titles like this. I mean, granted, Nintendo obviously tracked how well Mario did, how well Zelda did, Metroid, all their, you know, marquee AAA games at the time. But a game like this was, they really didn't care. I mean, not that I've been able to find any of the research I did. Is it a game I can recommend? Only if you really want to waste your time. I mean, it's just... There's nothing seemingly of any real value to be found in this game. And again, I don't know how many levels it is. So I don't know if it's a game that takes an hour to finish. I don't know if it takes five hours to finish. I certainly wouldn't invest that much time in it. Uh, I think the fact that I've invested, you know, 25 minutes into it, that's 25 minutes and change I'm not going to get back. So, you know, to me, it, it's one that I won't be unhappy to never see it or play it again. But part of me is unhappy that somebody had the brass to come up with it in the first place. So... Uh, but, as I said, that's WTF Wednesday for this week. If you've been enjoying the content on the channel, best way to show it, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and ring the bell to be notified of new episodes. We will be having Sports Saturday and Sucker Punch Sunday coming up this weekend, and then we are going to get started rolling out our next playthrough. Uh, just in time to get ready for Memorial Day weekend. So we won't have a one-day playthrough or WTF Wednesday next week, and we won't have it for a couple of weeks as we will be releasing those walkthrough episodes, or the playthrough episodes, I should say, during the work week, and then we'll keep doing uh, Sports Saturday and Sucker Punch Sunday on the weekends. If you've been enjoying the content, you can also show it by following us on social media through Instagram and threads. At Ronin's Retrocade helps spread the word about us so we can continue to build our subscriber base and make the channel bigger and better. Again, it's all about trying to build a community that loves these games from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation, that golden age like I've talked about between the early to mid-1980s and about 2010. There's such a vast, just endless amount of games that are interesting and worth taking a look at, present company accepted, I will gladly say. Uh, and that's what we're looking to be able to continue to bring you guys. And if there is a game you would like to see as feature from the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Nintendo, the Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, SMK Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, or PlayStation 2, leave it in the comments below or drop me a line on social media. It can be any game from those consoles that you want. My name is Ronan. It's been great to spend this WTF Wednesday with you. Be safe, be well, happy gaming. We'll see you this weekend for Sports Saturday and Sucker Punch Sunday. Bye.